We are the music makers, and we are the dreamers of dreams. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Sailboat Market Breakdown. Now, right before we get started, I do just want to give a huge, huge shout out to all of my patrons. They are absolutely what keep the channel going. Now, I don't have any sponsors or anything like that. I don't try to sell you Japanese knives or green drinks or even counseling. I don't do that kind of stuff. I'm just trying to help you get on the water. And for only $10 a month, you do get access to my full members area with hundreds and hundreds of other members all looking to get on the water sooner than later in the most cost-effective and time-efficient manner. So huge shout out to my patrons, as well as all of those people that leave me those super chats and super thanks. That's absolutely what keeps the channel and me able to pump out content every single day just for you. So thank you so, so much. And also don't forget to like the darn video. Hundreds of you show up for my YouTube premieres and I only get about a 10% like ratio. Don't lurk, like. Now, even if you're in the market for a mono hull, I want you to stay and watch this video as there's gonna be a whole bunch of things that apply to mono hulls, as well as we are gonna be comparing catamarans to mono hulls. So it's a really good video to watch whether you're buying a catamaran or a mono hull. But Today, we're breaking down the used catamaran market after many, many comments about do catamarans, do catamarans. Well, here you are. I'm doing catamarans just for you, but there's a whole bunch of stuff we need to determine first right out of the gate. Number one, who's buying a catamaran? Well, generally speaking, people with a larger budget because catamarans are far more expensive, again, the general term, than mono holes, but that can kind of be a bit tricky depending on your price point and your budget, even for a mono hull. So catamarans are definitely always worth looking at. Once you get, in my humble opinion, up there around that $160,000 budget, if you're checking out mono hulls in the $160,000 budget, you might as well do yourself a favor and also look at catamarans because you're gonna be able to find some in that same price point. Today, I'm gonna to blow you away with some ridiculous stats and comparisons between mono holes and catamarans, and you're gonna really have your eyes open today, so make sure you watch the whole video, all of those good things. But, now when buying a catamaran, are you gonna go for comfort or performance? That's one of your very basic, basic foundational reasons. What is the reason for you buying a catamaran? Now, catamarans are far more comfortable than monohulls, especially when it comes to coastal cruising, island hopping, kicking back in the tropics, things like that. Catamarans offer an almost unlimited amount of space on board, plenty of features and amenities that everybody is known to come and love on land. You can now get it on your boat with a catamaran because you have so much darn room. But the same time, those big catamarans, are they really performance oriented? Not generally speaking. And if performance is what you're after, why would you get a catamaran? If you're going for performance and speed, get a monohull. I mean, you don't see any catamarans in the Vendee globe, do you? No. So if you're looking for performance, things like that, a monohull would make a heck of a lot more sense. Now, catamarans can absolutely get the job done. They cross oceans, no problemo, as long as you get the right one. Um, they've got a very funny movement on them. They tend to hobby horse, so from the bow to the stern, it bobs up and down. Uh, they do generally take a little more wind to get going than your mono holes, because again, you got a big brick on the ocean trying to get moving. Gonna usually take a little bit more wind. A lot of different things you can look at with sails as far as downwind sails, spinnakers, things like that. So those are all things to consider. Now, for me, in my personal opinion, I think the only people going after a catamaran should be people going for comfort. I mean, they're like floating condos. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a very, very positive way. Why would you want to be uncomfortable on the water? If you want to be on the water and live on the water full time, why wouldn't you be trying to be as comfortable as possible? There should be none of this, uh, don't ever buy a catamaran. Don't ever buy a monohull. Monoholes suck. Get a catamaran. Get a monohull. Catamaran suck. That stuff's nonsense. All boats are meant to fit a kind of particular purpose there. There's nothing wrong with catamarans, nothing wrong with monohulls. Different horses for different courses, different features for different people. 
So kind of first sit down and determine what are you going for a catamaran for? In my assumption, the only reason you'd be going for a catamaran is for the comfort. The running costs are higher because your slip fees are going to be much, much higher because they're usually really, really wide. Um, so those are things to consider. And all the other stuff still applies to catamarans. Don't buy an old refit dumpster. By the time you're done doing these refit boats, unless you can do 95% of the work yourself, that refit catamaran that you're going to be working on for three years, by the time you're all done, it's going to cost the same as you could have gotten a catamaran that was already ready to go. So at that point, it comes down to what's more important for you. Is your time more important or is your hard cash money out of the bank more important? Because in reality, your time equals money. If you have to spend three years doing a refit, that's three years of time that you could have been making money or saving more money to get a boat that you didn't have to do that stuff. Trust me, there's not a lot to boat systems. There's only about 20 different really important things when it comes to the foundation on a vessel that a person needs to know. And you don't need to spend three years in a marina or something learning those things. You've got your fiberglass stuff, you've got your rigging stuff, your mast, your sails, your engine, your transmission, your seals, things like that. When it comes to foundational stuff, there's not endless amounts of foundational stuff. It really comes down to, you know, 20 different things on a boat, the electrical system, the batteries. It's not much. You don't need to go to the school of hard knocks in a marina and sweat your rump off trying to figure out how to learn the ins and outs of a boat. You can do that while sailing. And in my opinion, it's much, much better to get out there, start sailing on a boat that's fairly ready to go and kind of work on it as you're going. But don't get a boat that you're just going to be stuck in the marina. You can see that on all these silly YouTube channels. These people buy these boats and they're stuck in marinas for years. Then they get out there and they start sailing. They have no idea what they're doing still. Most important thing when it comes to sailing is being able to control your vessel in the open ocean in a variety of conditions. And you're going to learn none of that while sitting in a marina. So I am 100% always against refits and project boats just to get that out there. Now let's head on over to the used boat market over on Yacht Worlds where we're going to start. Let's start looking at some catamarans. So here we are. We're over on Yacht World. Now when you're looking at catamarans, you need to put in some sort of a minimum price. If you don't, you're just going to get a bunch of these brand new manufacturer listings even if you put price low to high. Now we know we're not gonna go for an absolute train wreck of a catamaran, but we're gonna go ahead and start our price at about $50,000. Now there's not gonna be a lot of options in that price range, but that's what we're doing because we're looking and we're wanting all of you to get as much information as possible when you're making this big, big boat purchase thing. Now, first up, we got a 1991 Pelican 34. Yes, she's old. And what have we already learned in the last week, if you've been following along? We do not even go down the rabbit hole of considering boats in this kind of shape. This is an absolute train wreck. So we, we just don't do this. This, this vessel is an absolute trash can. There's no need. Now, I know a lot of people get excited they really want a catamaran. They're like, oh my gosh, here's one. It's not that old. It's a 1991. It's only 55 grand. But I'm here to tell you, you're going to be into this boat for $200,000 by the time it's all said and done, or you're just going to sink it. Where did that person go? Somebody photoshopped half of that person out. <laughs> this is too much. And you, uh, <laughs> You watermarked all your photos. Do you think I'm taking this photo and what? <laughs> what am I going to do with this photo? Show how bad sails can look? Now on this vessel, just right off the bat, everything is going to have to replace. Someone lives on this thing uh, and they don't live a very clean lifestyle. You can just tell by how trash this boat is. Now once upon a time, yes, I'm sure that this boat was fantastic. What the f did you do there? What is going on? Uh, epoxy wood construction. I mean, this is just a project boat built in someone's backyard, probably. Uh, however, it requires general restoration work. By general, I mean the whole thing. Thank you. Um, and again, here we, we're back to the typical brokers telling us no information. Uh, copy paste it. So we're going to avoid whatever this is, stuff like this. Um, and But this does bring up a good point, this uh, diagram here. 
Now, when it comes to mono holes, we go for a length at the waterline versus our length overall with under a five foot difference. Now, you can't do that in catamarans. When we pull up sailboat data on some of these, it really doesn't give you much information. So when you're in the world of catamaran shopping, uh, you need to be out there getting on as many of them as you can. And one of the best ways really to do that is to charter a catamaran for a week. I mean, if you're up here in this kind of budget range, uh, you can run out to any of the charter companies. You can charter the boat for a couple of days, take it out, sail it, get it in a wide variety of conditions, and then kind of see what you're looking with or what you're looking at for whatever I'm trying to say there. Um, and so here, now we got another one. This is a 33 year old 30 foot catamaran. This is gonna be really, really small. Even if this boat was in fantastic shape, the only thing you're doing with this catamaran, coastal cruising and island hopping. And that might make sense, but this boat, it's probably just been sitting in a marina for ages. It's really small. I mean, a 30 foot catamaran, this one will tuck probably right into a normal slip. Um, but I mean, it's just, you're just, you're just kicking back on the islands here. Looks very, very similar to a lot of 35 foot catamarans, the Gemini's, some other things like that. And this one doesn't look nearly as bad as the last one we looked at. This one, I'm not seeing anything that's like, oh my God, the boat's a dumpster. It looks about how I'd expect a 33 year old vessel to look. Um, and it's only 60 grand. It's in Alabama. You'd have a heck of a ride getting it down to the Caribbean if that was your plan. Uh, ready for the next solid build brand new bimini top and dodger in the midst of great sales great rigging i need you guys to start giving me dates on those because if you're just telling me it's got great sales your uh, your definition of great sales and my definition of great sales i can assure you is completely different um and again not a lot of info now i don't really fault whoever this broker is because i get it it's a sixty thousand dollar boat but still i need you to do your job bro you can't just be giving me no info this is what we're going to kind of run into this 50 to $150,000 range. It's going to be a bunch of these old catamarans. And again, like I said at the beginning of the video, if, if you know how to do all the work and you got a spot picked out and that's what you want to do, uh, you can do that. But you also need to look at the flip side of, you know, you can just work for the time it would take you to refit it and get a better foundation of your vessel. A lot of people get excited and they just want to say that they have a boat when in reality, Oftentimes it's better just waiting a couple years and getting a better foundation for your sailboat. Um, so here we go. Little 36 foot Adele. I'm hundred percent sure I mispronounced that. I don't care. The nice thing about catamarans, they generally have really, really shallow drafts. That's awesome. You can tuck into a lot of places there. Um, I mean, again, nothing. That's a really clean engine bay. Is that a new engine? That's gotta be a new engine. Has to be. See, okay. And now we can see our motor mounts here. Again, anytime you can see these in a photo, pay attention. We're looking for motor mounts that have been replaced or are not rusted, not corroded. This belt is fairly new. You can tell because it still has the riding on it. So those are things you want to look for. None of this is rusted. Somebody did something with the engine. Let me see. I bet you didn't tell me. Okay, so this one's got the rigging replaced 2015. That's nice. It's only eight years old. We got two new engines it's almost like i could tell by looking at it <laughs> uh in 2050 hey that's awesome it's got solar panels you're not telling me much about it yacht world i'm never ever going to sign up for your mailing list uh okay so 96 all right 950 hours that's not bad last service cruising speed there's this is a slow one uh you're not doing 11 knots in this nice try um yeah I mean, I, wow. I'm kind of impressed with this just because you generally can't even get a catamaran in okay shape for 60 grand. Uh, this one seems to be in okay shape. Now, we don't have the big cockpit that we're used to with catamarans. Um, and I don't know how tall this guy is, but he looks like uh, Jolly Green Giant or something here. Uh, again, if you're taking pictures of boats, grab. Uh, somebody short and make it look big. So this Bimini would have to go. I don't know. I wonder how tall that guy is. I can't imagine he's very tall, but keep that in mind. If you're a tall guy, this ain't going to work for you. You got to adjust the boom. 
and then put on a different, just do a hard top dodger on catamarans. It makes no sense to do a bimini. So this one's got room, but it's really only up towards the bow. This cockpit's got no room. It's kind of a bummer. But again, for 60 grand, this one's had a lot of stuff done to it. So it's really not that bad. I'm going to see if I can find it on sailboat data. I'm just trying to figure out the width of the vessel to see if she can fit into a normal slip. Uh, let's pop over there and check one second. Yeah, they're not really showing much over here on sailboat data. It's kind of what I figured. It's like the, you know, now it doesn't look terrible. Uh, full disclosure, I don't have a lot of experience with this particular brand of catamaran. So you would be required to do your due diligence. Now, just from my experienced eyes looking at it, it doesn't look terrible. Uh, it appears to have a pretty good BDC. Now that's the bridge deck clearance. You always want to pay attention to this because the closer this deck sits to the water, the more slapping the vessel's going to get. And if you're down here in the Caribbean and you provisioned in Puerto Rico or something and headed south, it's going to weigh down your vessel. So you don't want to have a boat that's just going to slap all day, every day. But this one appears to have had some work done. Like I said, I'm not familiar with this brand and manufacturer catamaran. I wish I was because that that looks like a nice little budget catamaran, honestly. And it's in Greece, which is horribly unfortunate. Um, so that brings up a point. Let me adjust this over here to our United States. I'm an idiot and I forgot. I apologize. Um, so that one looked okay. I, that's probably why it has such a good price. It's in Europe. They've always got better prices. Now we already looked at this little 30. Not much. We're not doing this. We're not doing boats from the 60s. Again, a 28-foot catamaran makes no sense. You, you're better off getting a nice 35-foot mono hull. Again, we always got to compare things. Got to compare the price of the vessel to the mono hulls. So for this price, this catamaran makes no sense. You can get some nice 35, 38-footers in that range. Um, now, this looks pretty, but, uh, you know, this guy probably lives at the marina. Got himself a little catamaran. Looks like your typical, again, small catamaran. She's a 28 footer. So these pictures look big, but she's tiny. Now, if you're on a budget and you really want a catamaran and it's just what you're after, this one, again, looks really clean. But I mean, she's a 28 footer. Uh, she'll fit right in a normal slip. I just, I, I can't, uh, can't wrap my brain around buying a 28 foot catamaran. But again, if you're a solo guy on a budget, that seems like. Uh, yeah, I'd still, it looks nice, but I'd still just do a mono. Nice little mono on the 35 foot range. Easy cheesy. Now these PDQs, again, you're going to see a bunch of these uh, in this really, really budget price of the catamarans. Um, I don't like them. Uh, it reminds me of more, this particular one reminds me more of like a center cockpit sailboat. Uh, I hate that. The whole point of a catamaran, in my humble opinion, uh, is to have a giant cockpit with a wide open stern on your vessel. This one kind of tucked you in as if you're going to be crossing uh, the Indian Ocean. You're not. And again, we're paying attention to our bridge deck clearance here. This one appears to be pretty high. Not going to slap that much. Just little things we're looking at. Uh, we got the typical, the Gemini 105M. There's the 105M, the 105MC, things like that. Now the headroom's a bit tricky. Right when you walk in, the 105Ms and the 105MCs, Right here, you got to kind of tuck down. On the 35 Legacy, they extended this forward to the bow. It gives you better headroom. But I like the little Geminis. Again, it's 80 grand. Uh, and in that case, you again, I'd suggest getting on one and then compare it with some of the boats that we looked at three days ago in this price range. Uh, this is a 2000, so you're 23 years old. So we want some refit work to have been done on this boat. Again, these stupid dinghy davits. Get rid of this and figure out a better thing for your dinghy. Stop doing that. Uh, this guy photoshopped out his uh, numbers. I don't know why. Uh, what was that called originally? Something cat? Uh, yeah, but decent little cockpit. This would be wide open back here if you got rid of all this trash. Uh, figure out something better for your barbecue too. Everybody just like fell in this habit of let me clutter up the back of my vessel. Stop doing that. It looks stupid. Uh, this, uh, my brain hurts right now. I can't. Um, but again, nice little Gemini. Now I know that most of the people 
looking for catamarans aren't looking for the budget catamarans not these super budget catamarans this is a lot of money though for a lot of people myself included so we got to cover these um now here's the 105 mc a year newer only five grand more again if i was in the eighty thousand dollar price range i'd probably be looking at the gemini's i like them a lot get rid of this damn dingy this one looks rough though uh, again we're looking for overall condition now cosmetically interiors of vessel you can literally redo the entire interior of a monohuller catamaran for next to nothing uh, you can rip it all out and completely replace it it's not going to cost you that much um so don't hold too much value into that we go for foundational things there's another gemini 105 m c again we don't want to get these off the wall things that aren't very common because replacement parts can become incredibly difficult now you can just tell by the design on this boat just the curves and the shape of the hull. Uh, this guy was trying to, whoever designed this, was going for a, uh, attempting to do like a uh, performance-based catamaran. Um, so for our purposes of living full time, I mean, if you're going for performance, you're not buying a 1997 Shuttleworth shuttle cat. Um, you know, get yourself a little mono hull. This isn't, there's no room in here. This is all rotted and stuff. This hard tops looking rough um yeah just you know kind of what i would expect it does have the outboard that's easy for maintenance and things like that so again just depressing too old not really what we're after so the proud snow goose again for 90 grand in this price point you've got to go back and look at my video on the sailboats in this price range doesn't mean this boat's bad but this is too old you can get a far newer mono hull for the same price that'll take you uh further distances than this one ever will that's a foldable dinghy in case you guys have never seen one it's insane um now this boat in her day was phenomenal this is a nice uncluttered deck you got some seats up here a lot of room out there would have been great for the caribbean but now you know we're just we're going on 40 years old or something um, it's just too old for us. Unless, of course, someone did everything to the boat. And are we going to be able to tell that from a listing? Probably not, because this guy never does anything. Rebuild kits, emergency repair parts included for all major systems, solid condition. I don't care about your boat pedigree. A boat pedigree means absolutely nothing to me. I don't give a hoot um, about it at all. It already completed one circumnavigation. Oh, and it had a refit in 2003, but that's 20 years old, so now you need another one. So back in its day, it did a circumnavigation. That's impressive. I mean, you know, so maybe if you're in the market for catamaran and you're just stuck on it, you don't want a monohull for this price range. I mean, here's one that's gone the distance before. Now, you'd have to call up this broker. Uh, they're going to probably harp on that major refit in 2003, but that's 20 years old. So everything that they did in that refit you're going to have to do again because we're at the 20 year mark and you're probably going to have to do more than that uh but oh this guy actually gave you some stuff completely re-rigged do that nice so, uh drive completely re nice 560 amp ooh nice okay so this is all looking really good <sighs> everything's yeah this is a good job broker thank you so this guy told you a ton of stuff. I'm not going to go through all that stuff for the purpose of this listing or this video. But this guy, Buford Yacht Sales, hats off to you, uh, North Carolina. So this might be, I mean, if you're stuck on catamarans, it's you and the girlfriend or whatever. Um, this is really what you want. You've decided. I mean, this one might be worth taking a look at. It seems to have had a ton of stuff done to it. Uh, I don't like the dark wood, but neither here nor there. Yep, kind of this is this... Oh, what I'd expect. Um, so maybe that might work for you. You know, it'd be perfect for the Caribbean, coastal cruising, island hopping. She's already done a circumnavigation. So if that's what you're after, that's probably the best one for under 100 grand, just based off of all the stuff that was done to it. Get another Gemini. We're not trying to stay away from customs. Uh, replacement stuff can just wind up being too hard on those. We got the Endeavor 36, new arrival. But see how quick we jump up in price. I'm only on page two. We went from 90K to 120K. The blink of an eye um again little endeavor this is a 98 so just over 25 years old or something um but again right at that range you're going to have had a needed a major refit 
uh a few recent upgrades do make what's recent i need you to turn i need you to define recent for me um and let me know your definition of recent in mind recent to me says this year um again didn't tell me much info your typical endeavor 36 nice little catamarans uh again this be a budget thing for the world of catamarans not said there's nothing wrong with that i'm on a budget um but for this price i'm going with a mono hull if i'm comparing this to a mono hull for 120 grand i'm gonna pick up that uh there's like a cycling it's 43 or something on the market that's phenomenal and way newer than that so again that becomes a problem uh you know, in this price range, you've really got to sit back and understand why am I getting a catamaran? This is pretty low. This bridge deck clearance right here, uh, it's much lower than you think. It's right there in the center. The front of it looks high, but right there in the center, she's pretty low. Probably slap a lot. It's dumb uh, thing. Um, but this is, it's laid out nice. A lot of deck space there. Perfect for some tropical weather. Um, looks in fairly good shape, but for 135k... You know, she's going to be a wide one. I'm not going to fit in a normal slip. Uh, it's going to be too wide for that. You're going to get charged a premium there. Let's get to the interior. That's a pretty good cockpit. It's fairly nice there. The backrests there are nice. Uh, a lot of sailboats have too low of a backrest in the cockpit, and your back just feels like my kidney's going to fall out when I'm on a lot of these sailboats. This is just nice, wide open. I'd be curious to know what the headroom is, since they never tell you. Um, leopard print. Are you serious? All right, ladies, if you're watching, trust me. There's nowhere in the world that leopard print makes sense. Unless you're in, on an African safari hanging out with, I don't know, something. Or in the jungles of the Amazon with the jaguar. This is, leopard print's never, it's never, uh, it's never benefiting what you're putting it on. Trust me. Uh, but I like the layout of this. It's weird. I mean, it's rounded. Round sinks I despise with a passion. Um, this is rough. You got to like tuck to get down there. I don't like that. Um, I don't, again, I don't know what the headroom is there. And I'll have no way to find it because nobody wants to tell you. And why not just replace the panels? They're old. It's time to do that anyway. Get the water maker. That's an expensive water maker. Those Spectre water makers are only like five grand. So keep that in mind. Um, this Wildcat 350 was sailed from the US. Just, I mean, again, another catamaran that's going the distance. So people that say that they can't go the distance, they absolutely can go the distance and they do all the time. I don't mind this little charter, this little Wildcat. You know, for 135 grand, again, I'd have to consider why am I doing that? Why am I getting that over a bottle hole? Um, you know, there would have to be some features that I'm really after that would make me choose that. You know, maybe get a wife that just hates the idea of a, of a mono hole. I get that. I understand it. Um, you know, so keep that in mind right there. We're not doing island pack at catamarans. That's stupid. This boat's stupid. Um, now, the back of this reminds me of like a motor sail. That's exactly what this looks like. And again, we've cluttered up the entire stern of our vessel. I hate it when boats do that. You can't see. You lose too much of your view. Uh, this is really low, by the way. This bridge deck clearance on this one. She's going to slap like a mofo. Too low. Um, those are just some little things. But again, you'd have to consider the purpose. What am I doing on this boat? You know? Caribbean, who cares if that's low? <laughs> You're not out there roughing it. You're kicking back in the Caribbean. So who cares if it's low? Again, if you're going from like the USVI to Bahamas, you'd care if it's low. 9.9 uh, .9 outboard. Again, useless. Um, we always go for 15s. So stop paying a bunch of money for a 9.9. .9. It's dumb. This is a nice little chair thingy up here. That's good. And we're cruising. We're bruising. That's too small of a cockpit. Uh, but if you're a single dude, be just fine. Uh, but yeah, even then, you're never going to be able to grab friends and have them come over that's really really small um let's get to the interior here and see what she looks like there we go the anchor locker looks decent uh come on man I mean, come on interior please it's too steep i don't like it when they're steep like this there's enough ways to injure yourself on a sailboat or a catamaran um and 
taking a tumble down the companionway is not what we're after. But this is almost like a it's almost like a deck salon on the inside of it. But you got to go down to the inside. But that's going to give you a lot of headroom. So that's what the steep entryway is for. They're giving you a ton of te ton of headroom in here. It's really not bad. It's dated. It's 140 grand. Uh, if you really, really need a catamaran for some reason, I mean, you know, it just, it's too dated for me. Anytime somebody hand writes stuff on here, uh, I'm not a fan of it because uh, just get a little tag, put a little tag on there. Let people know what they're doing. Don't start handwriting stuff on your boat. Silly. Uh, let's check and see what the broker's going to tell us. Probably nothing. New dock lines. Right, you're serious. New dock lines. Dock lines. Dock lines. Serious, dude? Uh, a new cutlass bearing. Triple shaft. Cockpit drain hose. Yeah, I mean... I mean, I, I get it. I understand. I get the allure when you look... I, I, I get it. I get the allure when you look at stuff like this. Where is it at? Where is it at? Um, -dum -bum -bum. I get it. When you see stuff like this on a boat, looks like you're walking to someone's living room. So I understand it. It's not too old. You know, it's 28 years though. So you'd have to call, do much research. That's a lot of money. Definitely compare it to mono holes in the same range. Cause then the reality is you can get a, like a two, you can get like an X charter 2013 mono hole. It'll be comparable in size. Cause it's only a 35 foot cat. Um, so in this budget range of really, if size is what you're going for, if you're into the 140, 150 grand thing, you might think a model or a catamaran's got more space, but you've got to compare it to the same size, uh, mono holes there. A Beneteau blue two catamaran from 1986. I'm dying here in the ancient catamaran market. <sighs> this just... This, it makes no sense. We're not doing catamarans from 1986. Nice cockpit, though. I mean, at least you got that right. Is that checkered? That's a checkered floor. It was a checkered floor. So again, someone just lives on this probably out there in Hawaii, surfing, living the dream. That's cool for them. Probably works for them out there. You know, kicking back. Yeah, I don't like it. It looks like a trash can. All right, we're going. <laughs> this is getting rough here. Uh, all right. So now we at least get close to the 20 year mark, a 2002 Admiral 38. Again, this kind of money. What did we see yesterday when it came to the mono holes? Let's pull them up here. Uh, we're going to pull up some mono holes. So a sailing mono hole, uh, price low to high. So what are we looking at here? 170 grand. So you've got to do yourself the favor. You've got to compare it to the X charter boats in that range. So let's compare it really, really quick. Uh, so here, we're there. So you're talking, I mean, as far as a price comparison goes, you can get a 2017 50-foot monohull for the same price as a 2038 catamaran that looks busted. Um, so these budget catamarans are only going to make sense in my opinion if you're really really close to that 100k mark and you want a coastal cruise you want to kick back in the caribbean that's your budget maybe your wife despises the idea of healing you've been on that particular maker model and you really really like it um outside of that you know when you get up here in this range there's there's just, I mean, let me know in the comments. Is there any reason for any of you to choose this over this? There can't be. Is there something wrong with me and I just don't understand? I mean, there there can't be. I mean, this is a 2007 50-foot monohull. She's giant. How do I know? I just sailed like 2,000 miles on one of these for one of my clients. It's huge. Um, so we're not doing stuff like that. Again, it's not going to make any sense. So that would be all of these because now we've reached that, you know, too much money thing. Um, I mean, even this, you know, I'm in spirit. It's not a well-known catamaran brand. I mean, compared to like a leopard or a fountain Peugeot or an Outremer or something like that. Wonky design. 
um, you know, and again, you're at 195 grand. Why? Why? Why would you do this? You got to in boom furler. You don't see this often, but this brings up a good point. The in booms are a bit easier to jam than the in mast. I prefer the in mast, but an in boom is less expensive to add after the fact. So that's when you'll generally see these. Usually if it's from a factory, it's going to be an in mast, not an in boom. I love in mast furlers, in booms, not a fan of. But for that kind of money, it's just, uh, you know, it's not making any sense. So now we've gone up to 200 grand. Now we're getting to like 45 foot catamarans. It's a Prout 45. So she's going to be huge. Um, and then again, in this case, it'd be like, well, why? Now this isn't the lagoon or the leopard that most people are used to. Uh, it's like a bigger, bigger version of a Gemini is how it's kind of laid out. And I mean, this is awesome. Don't get me wrong. You can lay this table down and have a love shack in there. If that's what you're after. You had a ton of room though. Not a lot of headroom. So not for a tall person, um, but laid out nice. You know, when it comes to uh, personal space, not terribly laid out, very nice galley, all those good things. But for 200 grand, again, if you're going to compare that to mono holes, I mean, you're getting way up there when it comes to the old uh, mono hole game. So you, and you have to, I mean, if that's your budget, you've got to compare it to the mono holes. You know, you get a mono holes 20 years newer, huge. I mean, like the Oceanus 48 is a giant mono hole enormous and up here in the two hundred thousand dollar range i mean you're talking a brand new mono hull 2018 45 uh 2017 48 we got a 519 2018 there'd be no sense that nothing in the world would make sense to buy this 1995 prout catamaran we're in a funny category where that about that hundred and twenty to two hundred and fifty thousand dollar range, you really got to compare it to the mono hauls, because more often than not, you're gonna actually get more room with the mono hull. And then we jump instantly. All I did was go up a page, and we went up fifty grand. Catamarans are expensive. Now again, when you're in the two hundred fifty grand range, you got to understand you can get a new fifty foot mono hull. A new, I mean, less than five years old. Just so that you know. Um, in that price range and then as we go up in the five hundred thousand dollar price range you get a 2020 51.1 now for this kind of money i understand if you look at your budget's 500 grand a catamaran's probably going to outdo this um although the 51.1 is it feels huge it sails like a song uh i mean this is a different this is a different world of mono hulls than most of us are used to. And if you've never been on one, the interior feels a lot like a catamaran because it's just so it's laid out so well. It's very user friendly. But again, you are walking down. So that can sometimes make people feel like they're walking into a cave. But when you start looking at five hundred thousand dollar catamarans, I mean, they're, you know, I mean, it's hard to beat a $500,000 catamaran. That's just all that there is to it. When it comes to comfort, they are out of this world. So we're moving up in our budget. Again, this $250,000 range. I'm really after like a 44-foot catamaran. If I'm doing a 38-foot catamaran for the 250, no, she's a 2010. Awesome. So now you can start to really compare it. You can grab a 2010 Leopard 38 for 250. When it comes to mono holes over here for the $250,000 price range, uh, I'm just using X catamarans is, or X charters as an example. Uh, it's easy to adjust them for budget. So when you're up in that $250,000 range for, you're talking a 50 foot boat that's eight years newer. Um, but to use the 519 again, just as an example, I understand. I mean, this is a huge cockpit. I get it. A lot of room there, but I can see the allure when you're comparing this kind of a 50 footer to uh, like a 40 foot newer catamaran. By newer, I mean 2010 or newer. Uh, let's get to the interior, please. Come on. You're killing me here, Moorings. You are killing me right now with your exterior photos. This is absolutely absurd. I understand. There's the interior of it. Um, 
Let's get to the interior of this one. You know, nice big cockpit, easy access to inside, out of the vessel, to and from. Okay, come on. The outside pictures. You guys, you know, I understand. You look at this, you got, you know, a 360 degree view. It's all on one level. You walk straight in versus down a companion way. I, I understand the allure. I get it. I see it. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I'm buying what you're selling. So I understand. Now, if you're in this price point and if, if a catamaran's just what you're after, you like it all being on one level, you like that 360 degree view, um, I, I understand. I, I, I get it. I get what you're going after there. So it's really, really things to consider. Uh, but again, that's once you get up into this $250,000 price range, when you're in that, whatever I said before, 125,000, to about this point, not going to make a lot of, a lot of sense. And we've got our lagoon for tens. Uh, the lagoon's the one that had problems with the bulkheads on the sailing parlay revival boat. Um, so you'd want to make sure that you didn't pick up a model that had those same issues. Now, again, you start comparing this lagoon for 10, uh, giant, giant cockpit. I hate this again, launch all this stuff, get rid of it, do a hard top, add your traveler on top of the hard top. Um, you know, and do those things. Um, but this is nice. I mean, I understand. And again, it's all on one level. It's 250 grand. You're going to be looking at a 50 foot mono hole. This is going to feel bigger. It's going to be laid out more user friendly because everything's on one level. Um, she does have a lot of easy access to the engines, things like that. Uh, so I understand. I get it. This, this again, makes a lot of sense to me. Now, she's going to be about 25 feet wide or something. You're not going to be able to fit into your standard monohull slips. So your running costs are going to be higher, but you can also set up the boat for living at anchor to kind of offset that marina cost. I hate living at anchor. It's not for me, but maybe it's for you. So again, we had a Leopard 42. These are kind of making sense. It's a comparable comparison to the monohulls. You know, 50 foot monohull is going to be about the same running cost as a 42 foot or 45 foot catamaran. Uh, except for slips and haul outs are going to be more expensive on the catamarans. Got to keep that in mind. Uh, this one, not nearly as cool as the uh, lagoon. Uh, but again, giant master suite. So I, I understand the appeal here. I like it. Now, leopards, lagoons, fountain Peugeots, uh, your more popular catamarans, they're not performance-based catamarans. They can absolutely get the job done. You can go all over the place on them. Um, you know, you can cross the Pacific. What's his name? Just cross the Pacific on a Lagoon 44 or something. I think it is. Um, so they can absolutely get the job done, but they're not really performance oriented. So don't think you're going to go out here and win uh, world races on them. You're not, um, uh, takes a little bit more wind to get going. They're fairly slow. They can point a little bit higher to the wind, but that's really based on sea conditions as well. So keep that in mind when you're in these mid 40 foot popular catamarans, the leopards, um, uh, the goons things like that so at this point once you reach this budget now we're not going back we're not going back in time we're not doing 90s we're not doing 80s at all we're trying to get you know earlier we're going to try to get 2005 or later get us underneath that 20 year mark and we're going to try to find one that somebody's already done a lot of that foundational refit work too especially for this price point and in this age. So we're not doing any of these. They'll, they'll make no sense. The Manta 42 MK2. Um, you know, it's... Uh, I think that there's better options. I would honestly do a Lagoon or a Leopard probably before this Manta. Again, it would depend heavily... So I'm just going to take to the interior here. It would depend heavily on the layout of the vessel for me personally, if it worked. How's the headroom? How's the seating? Um, you know, there's a lot of different options when it comes to the layouts of these catamarans, even though it doesn't seem like it, there is. So those are things to consider. And again, True Colors 300, 2003, fully equipped. So you say fully equipped, but then you don't tell me. Uh, new dinghy, 20 horsepower. Good for you, buddy. Good for you. New engines, new sail drives, uh, new mast new standing rigging hardware okay chain play. so this is so okay so here perfect example here's one that went through a major refit basically uh and it's right at that 20 year mark this 
washer dryer combo is looking rough, man. Looking rough. Uh, and this is a very, very small cabin. But this, you know, this guy's had a lot, this guy's done a lot of stuff to it. Um, so keep that in mind. When you're hitting that close to 20 year mark, same thing with monohulls as it is with catamarans. You've got to get one where somebody's already done a bunch of that uh, stuff to it. Now, here's a Fountain Peugeot. You see that bridge deck clearance? Fairly high. Not going to slap too much. It's in the middle. It's going to slap a little bit. Going to kind of hobby horse just based on the boat's design. Um, but, I mean, it's a 36 for 275. So, again, you'd have to compare this to those 50-footers. Kind of see if it made sense. And if it does, I get it. She got two cabin layout that's some people like the big master suite on the catamarans but this is a 36 footer so the two cabin makes more sense uh again everything's on one level makes life on board fairly easy you don't feel like you're living in a cave it, I, I mean i get it making sense this sinks absolutely stupid this is just dumb whoever made that popular i hate you um so yeah the little standard thing again when it comes to catamarans you got to get on them really and they're only going to make sense if you're in that budget catamaran market right around the hundred grand point because you can get some sleepers in that price point and then again they're only going to make sense once you get up here in this 2000 or 275k 300k range that's just my opinion does not mean i'm right that's why i'm walking through this with you and kind of giving you my thoughts as we go. Now, for 275K, I'm not buying a boat this sold. I don't give a heck what it is. I'm not doing it. Same thing I wouldn't do with a monohull. Now, this one's coming up on the 20-year mark, the Leopard 42. Leopards are well-known. They can do whatever you need to do on the boat. She's laid out fairly well. Got a nice bridge deck clearance. Um, it's ugly. I mean, there's just no way around it. This is ugly. Again, personal opinion. Take it or leave it. Um, now she's already got an arch there. You can easily make this a hard top. You could extend it back, which I think would be cool. Launch the dinghy off the back of it, put it on the bow, especially on a catamaran. Use an extra halyard up here, halyard up here. Just pull it up on the bow. Open up the back of it. Nice bridge deck clearance. Okay. Wouldn't say nice. Okay. It's actually pretty low. <laughs> now that I think about it, this boat's going to slap a bunch. That's really low. My bad. Looked at that wrong first. Um, yeah, I mean, this guy's probably done some work to it. Things are all laid out. She's going to hobby horse. She's going to rock. It's just uh, welcome to the world of 40-foot catamarans. It is what it is. This is looking fairly organized. Again, that's kind of what we're going for when we're judging general condition of these catamarans. Things to consider. This, they, they're doing an exterior enclosure uh, with your bimini. So this is what I always tell people to do on a mono hole. It's the same thing. Get a hard top and close it. Don't do a bimini top. Do a hard top. You can put all your solar up there, everything. Then you can add these to fold them down to give yourself a nice exterior livable space. But they didn't do any windows in this back stuff, which they should have because it really... Oh, it's like a see-through. Never mind. I'm an idiot. Okay. Scratch that. Um, yeah, I dig it. I hated the look of it at first, like it now that we're going through it. Uh, this all makes sense. And again, nice big old. So I understand. Again, here we are. Leopard 42, 2004. The layout, I'm kind of digging. I'm liking the cockpit. I'm liking the hard top. I'm liking what they did to it. I'm hating this epoxy nonsense you did. Stop watching TikTok. I'm sure that's where you got that idea from. Um, I don't like it. But that's neither here nor there. I'm just a pretentious cunt. Um, so here we go. We got EPIRB. And again, when you're up in this price range, that EPER brings up a good point. You got to consider what you're doing with the boat. If you want to go offshore, do an Atlantic crossing, things like that. You got to start looking at things like EPERBs. How's the chart plotter? What's my anchor chain looking like? How much do I have? Uh, do I've got snubbers, life jackets, life raft? Uh, all those things you want to have because they add up to a ton of money. You can go and drop, you can drop $10,000 just on safety equipment for a crossing. This is phenomenal. This looks great. I like this. This would actually make you feel like you're in a bedroom instead of a cave. Mono holes, their their aft cabins looking like trash all the time. Um, you know, so yeah, I mean this looks great. You know, 280k. And then at that price, 
Again, we gotta hop over. We gotta we gotta make sure we're always checking everything. So we're gonna do it with the sailing catamaran. So that's 280k. We'll do price low to high. So what can I get for 280k? That's a leopard 42. So I could do a newer, six year newer 38. Now again, the newer the boat, the bigger it's gonna feel. Even though the older one says 42, the 38 is gonna be very very similar. Um, you know, so I could do a couple. So I could do a 38, basically compared to the 42. For that price, so I'm going to get a boat that's six years newer. Um, she will be an ex-charter boat. This one happens to be in Croatia. The 38 is going to feel very similar in size to that 42, just because of the year difference. Uh, you went up six years. There's a little model change in that place, so it's going to feel similar. So that's what you'd have to start doing. Now, this one's in Croatia, so it's a terrible example, but just in general terms um that's what you'd have to do there and i mean by looking at this honestly i'm liking the 42 more than the 38 but again i'd have to get out there on both of those and kind of see this one's in virginia as well the other one's in croatia so this would obviously win um dean 440 not you know not really what i'm after here um yeah they uh you got a lot of length of the water line so this 440 it's really not because a lot of this as far as interior you interior usable space makes no sense but here's a great picture of what i'm talking about so they did this dumb thing here <laughs> and then you did a dumb arch here what you should have done is done an arch similar to this and then this one extended it do a better frame this frame looks like somebody built it with uh lego logs or whatever those were uh and then just extend it back here so raise this up up here to the boom however close you can get without interacting or interfering with your sail plan and then just run it straight back and then open it up up here and boom instead of having to tuck out the side of it like that guy this boat makes no sense let's you know, i don't need 600 photos of the outside I, trust me i don't this is so stupid you did such a bad job here whoever designed that such a bad job all right tomorrow when we get to the interior here we are the the lagoon is going to make more sense it's just yeah we're done with this boat Move over it a sun cat 40 in new york again if you're talking this price for a 40 footer you might as well go newer oh no this one's a 2013 never mind i'm an idiot i forgot my bad um yeah little flimsy sun cat not terrible great for coastal cruising island hopping um you know she can go offshore as well if you want to so could absolutely be a consideration um you'd have to get on it you'd have to compare this one to the Lagoon 42, Leopard 38, uh, and kind of see which one was laid out best for you. And then which one's got the most amenities? Who's done the most work to it? Because even though this one, we're not at that 20 year mark, but we are at that 10 year mark. So you really got to kind of see who's done the most to their boat. You got to call them, do the spreadsheet, it's available on my website, uh, and all that stuff. For this price, we're not doing boats from the 90s. It's not happening. We're not doing Manta, MK2s, it's just no there's better boats out there and up in price we go here now we got a 2006 leopard 43 leopard did this weird george of the jetsons type of uh type of design everything's rounded so whoever their design guy was he was a really big fan on rounded now here's just a side note you come up to the vessel and you have this and i get what they were going for an extra standing area out here uh it could barbecue out there if you got rid of this dumb dinghy uh and lift you could have a lot more room there i sure would but i would have liked to have seen him just have open up the cockpit bring this dodger or this hard top back put these these braces put them back here and just have a nice giant hard top this all wide open you walk right up into the entryway of the cockpit would have been like a million bucks um 
you know, it's almost sometimes I'm like, do the people that design these actually sail or have you guys just been staring at numbers on a computer for too long? Right. This gives me cause for concern. Looking a little bit moldy and what up there. I don't want to get uh, into any kind of water damage inside of my hard top there. Not really liking the way that that looked initially. Let's cruise to the inside. I mean, maybe. Maybe we will. Yeah. Typical leopard. Everything's rounded. This looks like a Star Trek emblem. This hurts my brain. I don't know who designed this or why. I don't like this. The le the um, lagoons are a better layout. That 42 lagoon was looking really good, even though it was a little bit older. Now, again, you know, we're hitting the 40 footers. We're getting up to that 300K range. So 2006 Leopard 40, 300K. If we pop over and look at X charters, you get a 2016 Leopard 40 for 300K. This one's sale pending, but you're way better off going with newer. This one's a decade newer. So you're way better off doing that. Uh, this one is, of course, sale pending, but apples to oranges, it's really apples to apples. 2006 Leopard 40, 2016 Leopard 40. This is laid out better. See how they did this? This is a good example of what I was talking about. Uh, open this up. Open this stern up. That's what they did here. Boom. So the design change in there was good. Finally, somebody with a brain. Again, launch this dinghy. Get this off the... You have a catamaran, you ding -a ling Put it on the bow. Just put it on the bow. Rig up a halyard up there. Make it nice and simple. Put it on the bow. Get it off of here. Get it out of here. Uh, so in this case, you'd obviously go with the charter. That charters probably hurricane damage you'd have to look into all that stuff i've discussed that at nausea in my videos but that's what you'd do we're not doing this because again these would start to make no sense not with what's available hurricane damage no hurricane damage okay happens to be in greece eh, whatever uh if if your budget's 300k i'm guessing you can go to greece and sail all the summer in the mediterranean and then cross it back over and you'll be all right uh, so this Fountain Peugeot would make no sense. This Leopard would make no sense. Again, where's all the good deals at? You guys should know by now. Right now, in November, today's the 28th of October. In November is the deals. So you got to hop on those before to the X Charters, try to find yourself a gem. It can absolutely be done. Now we got a 2010 Lagoon 400. This one's in Seattle. I'm surprised it's only 300K. Uh, nice bridge deck clearance there. Yeah, surprising that uh, only ask, usually Seattle's wildly overpriced. So when you hit the 2010 mark, this is a big cutoff for catamarans in general. Roughly right around 2010, the designs changed quite a bit as far as the cockpit layout on catamarans. Something very important to keep in mind. Uh, you're going to see a big change there. They went to a nice wide open cockpit, huge tons of room. Lots of hanging out space. Some people like the helm up here where you can see out. Some people like it down here. That's a personal preference. Uh, up here, you're pretty exposed. This guy's got it enclosed. That's nice. But all this eyes and glass is really, really difficult to see through in rough weather when it's raining and rough seas. This is almost impossible. So whoever's up here is going to get trashed in rough seas. Just keep that in mind. Um, but it gives you a giant cockpit down here and kind of gets the helmsman up and out of the way. So that's nice. Uh, it's a good feature, but again, there's pros and cons to it. Going to get hammered up here in rough seas. Going to be hard to see, but you open all this up for your crew. Um, you know, not a bad little thing. Not a bad little plan. And this is gorgeous. This looks amazing. I get it. You got a 360 degree view of the world outside. Everything's all nice on one level. You're at that $300,000 range. You're going to be similar. Uh, you can go newer with an X charter, usually speaking. Um, but that $300,000 range, you can get newer X charter. Currently, the only ones available are way on the other side of the planet. So this little Lagoon 400, this is looking like a good deal. But again, I haven't called the broker. I haven't asked him anything. I don't know anything about this boat. I'm just going off of uh, generalities right now. I already know. Amazing price. I already said that, dude. Thanks. Like, almost like I know what I'm talking about. But like I mentioned earlier, these boats are going to fall in that 
really wide, 25 footish beam. So you can't fit normal slips. So your running cost is going to generally be higher than the same size model hull because you're going to go up. But a 40 foot model hull is going to offer you not near the amount of space as this is a 50 foot wheel, but a 50 foot is going to be laid out quite a bit differently. And I understand the appeal of this. This looks like a million bucks to me. I love this. I'm into it. I'm digging it. I like it that you can kind of walk around. It makes it easier to make the bed. There's all kinds of benefits being able to walk around does. This Lagoon 40 footer looks like a million dollars to me. If I was going to buy a catamaran of this budget range, I mean, this one looks like a million bucks. You know, this looks fantastic. I love it. Nice, clean, wide open deck. 360 degree view from inside. I mean, wowzer. You know, I, I get it. I'm into it. I like it. I can't deny it. Can't deny it at all. Um, you know, only got one shower on board. Three, yeah. They always put this, they put this little extra berth. You, ain't nobody going up there. <laughs> um, so again, we're not doing old catamarans, not at this price. Uh, the Dean 411 doesn't pales in comparison to Lagoon 40. Um, the Admiral 40, again, um, I just think that there's better boats out there in this price range. These little, these Admiral 40s are not that bad, but again, I'd just do Lagoon 40. Um, I think in this price range, neither of them are performance catamarans. They're both going to handle similar to each other. It's going to come down to a personal preference on the layout. I think the Lagoon 40 is laid out much, much better than this boat is as far as user friendliness. Uh, this one, you got to kind of step down. I don't like that. If I'm spending $300,000 on a catamaran, I want a giant cockpit. I want to walk same level inside. I don't want to step over and down at all. I just want to walk right inside. Again, launch that stupid dinghy. This is not nearly as big as the Lagoon 40. The Lagoon 40 is going to smoke that one. That's why we don't really look at admirals. They're kind of designed by a dingle dong. Um, now we got our Lagoon 380 North Carolina. It's difficult because those 40s are really, really nice. Um, and now we've hit this $300,000 budget range. Let's see here. I mean, it's nice. It's your typical 38 foot catamaran. A little bit smaller. Catamarans are very, very easy to handle. Uh, so size, not really a concern. Um, as far as being able to solo it. Uh, yeah. It's just the Lagoon 40. You're just going to get, uh, you're going to get more than that 380. And since they're so similarly priced, I'm doing the Lagoon 40. Again, we're not doing boats from the nineties, not for 300 K leopard 38, same thing. Doing the Lagoon 40 leopard 38 is okay though. 20 K more. So the price jumps, as you can see, they tend to jump quite a bit. Um, and for 319 K at 2011, 38 footer for that kind of money, you know, then I'm starting to look at again, the 2016 leopard 40 ish, cause we can negotiate here. Um, it doesn't leopard, you know, I'm doing one of these. I'm going to get a newer one. Even if I'm looking at it like a leopard 38, I'm just going to do an X charter. going to get newer for less money. Not going to make any sense to buy from a private owner at this price point. So that's something you really, really need to consider. Once you hit this price point again, it's really going to be, you got to, you have to look at your options. Now there's moorings brokerage right here. There's also sun sale brokerage, basically the same thing. You can just adjust them by a uh, type of vessel basically. Uh, and then just kind of adjust it price low to high. Uh, a lot of them are coming out across the pond. So we can't really look at those. Um, you know, everything's listed in pounds, but a 2018 40 foot leopard for 350, that's going to make more sense, um, than a 2000 leopard, 11 leopard 38 for 320. And once you're up in this high budget range, um, you know, if you got some negotiating room here, it just, you get a bigger boat, it's far newer. So once you hit that price point that we've been discussing for the last half an hour, you really have to do yourself a favor and look at at, at X charters. I think that again, with mono hulls, it's absolutely true. Once you hit a certain budget, X charters are really the way to go. And the catamaran market is the same thing. Once you hit that right around $275,000 range, uh, and up quite a ways in the world of catamarans, um, X charter is just going to be the way to go. You're going to get a newer vessel, 
generally a bigger vessel for the same amount of money. So unless a private owner has done just an absurd amount of work to it, we, we got to go with the next charter. For the bank account, it's going to make a heck of a lot more sense than anything else is. Um, now, occasionally you can find these little gems. I mean, here's a big one. It's a 47 leopard, but you go back in years. And it's similar with uh, catamarans as it is when mono holes. When you go back in year, even though it says 47, your livable space on board is not 47. Um, it's going to be less. So some of the newer 44s can actually be bigger than this 47. And at 340k range, you can get like a newer 40, um, generally speaking. So you might get a little extra room with this 47. But you're going to go all the way back to 2003 so it's going to be right at that 20 year breaking point so then you got to scroll down and look like what's the guy done here cruise at eight knots that's wishful thinking um you know a 47 foot mono hull <laughs> cruising at nine knots but anyway um so it's you gotta you really gotta consider all your options this guy told you some stuff, but this is all just uh, your basic nonsense. This is copy and pasted stuff, except for the anchor and the chain. Not really much I'm seeing there. But again, compare it to the 40s. You might find a 40 is laid out uh, much more user friendly. Your running cost is going to be a little bit lower. You're not going to lose a tremendous amount when it comes to your livable space on board. Uh, and you get a boat that's, you know, 15 years newer. So I would go smaller and newer before I'd go older and bigger, uh, for sure. And that's true with both mono holes and catamarans. So if you're in the market for a mono hole, you have to keep that in mind. Now we got the Lagoon 420 again, 350k. I'm just going to probably get myself one of these. You know, we've got a Lagoon 2008 420. I'm probably just going to go with the 2018 40 footer. It's just going to make more sense. You know, apples to apples, prices are there. Again, you've got that design, that giant design change um, on a lot of these right around that 2010 mark. So you look at the back of this one, the 2008. Let's see how uh, our cockpit's looking. So, this is nice. You get like almost two master suites. Don't get me wrong. This boat's phenomenal. Love it. Um, but I'm probably just going to go. Yeah. So they had already done the change here. So this is big. It's nice. It's wide open. It's got the hard top on there. Every boat should have a hard top. There should be no biminis on boats. They should all be hard tops, both monos and catamarans included. And the hard top should always carry all the way to stern and get rid of this weird nonsense where everybody just clutters up the back of their boat with dinghies and barbecues and solar and crap uh get rid of it this boat looks like a million dollars it's a 2008 so again you're coming up on that 20 year mark another five years or so so you want to see like what they've done to it see if they've given you for inf any information what have we all learned by now brokers never give you information because they suck um yeah this is a trash can so You'd have to compare the 420 to the 40. I would still just do a new 40. It's gonna, I'm gonna get a boat far, far newer. I don't gotta worry about all that um, refit stuff, all that upgrades and replacements. I'm just gonna do that. Um, we're, so again, we're not doing boats from 2000s. Another Lagoon 39, you're gonna start to see the same thing that you see in model hulls. Models are gonna start to repeat themselves here. Now the admirals, we stay away. This is a 2021. That's insane. Absolutely insane. And we normally stay away from them. It would have made more sense just to extend your hard top here and then put solar panels attached to your hard top instead of hanging them off the back here with some uh, stainless steel bracing. Makes no damn sense to me. Um, you know, nice boat and it's a 2021. Uh, this would be phenomenal, but you're at 370K, but it is a 2021. So it's weird that they're selling it. I mean, that's probably a smoking deal. Um, what is it, 370K for 2021? Yeah, I mean, you can't really beat that year range when you're talking uh, even X Charter. Can't really beat that. Wonder why that's for sale. What's going on here? U.S. tax paid only two years old. Yeah, why? Why is it only... What are they doing? Divorce? Breakup? What happened? He purchased the Admiral, blah, blah, blah. That cat. Oh, yeah. 
Okay, I, I don't. I don't understand it. Yeah. This is like one of the 1,000 amp hour lithium battery bank. I mean, this would be one somebody's got to call on and find out what the deal is. Uh, I'm not super, super familiar with the Admirals, so I don't want to give you good or bad information. Judging out the listing, that's an awfully new boat for that kind of money. I don't understand it, so maybe someone can explain it to me. Uh, I don't get it. Um, the multi-hull company, that's another ex-charter company you can usually... Uh, it's not an ex-charter company, it's a, it's a catamaran company. You can usually find pretty good deals through them. Um, this is like a racing catamaran. Wouldn't make sense for our purposes, because what are we doing? We're going to like live, you know, full time. Again, we stay away from custom boats. We don't want some backyard built, garage built, planned out vessel, which is what the, some other of these boats might've been. Again, at 41, 2010, this price, we're just going to X charter. It's going to make a heck of a lot more sense. Now, then you move all the way up to the 440s. This is pushing up on 400K mark. Gosh, I hate this netting. Um, I understand why you have it, but... The 440 Lagoon's huge. I believe this is the one that has the bulkhead issues, though. So that would be something to absolutely really check out. So I don't want to say too much good or bad about this boat because I'm pretty sure this is the one with the bulkhead issues. Um, but giant interior, all on one level, yada, 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 yada. I think this is the same one Parlay has. If I'm not mistaken. Probably wrong because I'm an idiot. But uh, so this looks all good. Look, they even replaced their panels with carbon fiber. How fancy. Um, yeah, your typical Lagoon 440, but I think that's the one with the bulkhead issues. If that's the one with the bulkhead issues, I would just completely avoid that. Good deal, bad deal, whatever. I'd completely avoid that design flaw, if that's what it was. Um, so there is that. Again, we're not doing boats from the 90s. Not happening. We're getting new here, kids. The Bollies, these are not, um... This would be like the wish version of a catamaran. The Bali's are really not built to a high quality standard, in my opinion. They are very much flimsy catamarans. I wouldn't sail on a Bali uh, anywhere. Now they're laid out phenomenal. Looks like Ikea. I love the Ikea look. But when it comes to $400,000, um, you know, at that range, I'd probably just pop on over and I'd just grab myself a lagoon. Um, or a leopard or something, you know, I'm going to get the same year. I'm going to get a, a better known manufacturer. That's got a, you know, a little bit better history, a longer history in the world of things. Um, I thought that was lightning in the background. That's cool. What's this dumbass thing hanging off the bow. That's stupid. Uh, you're just adding to your length overall. This is really dumb. I hate it when people do like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, I know what you're doing there. You're trying to add more sail area. Those are stock photos. Don't don't give me stock photos on a four hundred thousand dollar boat, dude. Lagoon four twenty again. We're just gonna do an X charter. Makes more sense, right? Uh, the Lagoon four fifty F West Palm, Florida. This is a huge boat. This is phenomenal. Nothing wrong with this boat at all. It's the four fifty F. It's not the four forty that had the bulkhead issues. Um, you know, it looks like a catamaran. Giant entryway. Again, get rid. I hate, fuck, I hate this stuff. Um, stop cluttering it up. This is the, the worst place on the planet for a life raft. How are you going to get to that? If you're out there getting your butt kicked and you're tossed around, the boat's getting hammered, you're hobby horsing. What are you going to do? You're going to come out here, hang over, pull the strap, hope it falls off the back, still stays attached, doesn't get caught up in your dumb little solar panel uh, dinghy lift system here. That's just a, it's stupid. This is stupid. A lot of times people do things and it just becomes the norm and it's a terrible, terrible idea. That is the case of this boat. But she's a 450 catamaran. Uh, 410K. Let's get to the interior. Maybe, maybe not. We'll just keep looking at stupid shit. God, that's such a fuck. Okay, tomorrow. Oh, still not. There we go. Thanks. Oh, and then what'd you do? You gave me three pictures of the interior, you mother trucker. Okay, I wouldn't buy this boat just based off this stupid listing. Uh, multi-health company, you're an idiot. All right. With the Lagoon 420 owner's version, owner's version is nice. Um, they did already enclose this here. That's nice. Again, you did some nonsense with the solar panels. This is a cheap way to add solar. Get a really inexpensive thing. Little frame. You should have just redone the hard top, extended it back and out. And you could have laid them all flat on there. But this guy's got a ton of solar. This thing could probably live off grid for a year. This blue is a little iffy. Uh, again... You know, everybody wants to be an interior designer. I love this. This is like a million bucks to me. 
I like it. I'm into it. I'm buying it. Pick it up what they're putting down. Uh, the Fox Teak, I'm a big, big fan of. Less maintenance. Yeah, this boat looks like a million bucks, and it should for 400 grand. Yep, I love it. You know, if I was going to buy a catamaran, probably digging this. This is the owner's version. So you can get a newer one, X Charter, uh, for less. So this guy wants 410K. So I can get a. Dun, dun, dun. Well, I get the 40 footer. So I get a newer 40 footer. But this one looks like it was really, really well taken care of. So again, sometimes you're going to run into these cases where, yeah, you can get one a little bit smaller, a little bit newer. It might make sense. Might. It'd be rare if it made sense to get this one over a newer X Charter. He's got 2,600 watts of solar. Holy shenanigans. Good for you. And he's got nine. So this is where things really start to add up money-wise. You'd have to look at his battery system. What kind of batteries did he go with? Because that's a ton of money. Just those two things. So at least they told us something. And I kind of had an inclination or a feeling that this boat was well taken care of just by looking at it. Um... Let's see preventive maintenance rebuild oh nice so they rebuilt the engine 2020 that's good so again we've gone a little bit older we've gone bigger but this one's got a lot of stuff um battery tack replaced blah blah okay yeah so this is yeah here we go these are expensive <laughs> wow three three hundred rely on batteries those are fairly expensive uh, they're not like insanely expensive but they're fairly expensive and the guy's got probably 10k and a battery bank upgrade um you know probably another three to five and solar another three probably for that uh little arch they built for it i mean the guy that's this is a lot of money here so you've got to look at that and give them a call if that's kind of what you're interested in. That looks that looks really, really good. I mean, it really does. I'm going to have to click back on it because it looks so good. Yeah, I don't like the blue, but that's easily fixed. Yeah, I mean, this is just... <laughs> just picture myself right now, pina colada, kicking back, blackout drunk. On the couch of the Caribbean. I mean, it seems like a really good time to me. Uh, but what do I know? Now, Leopard 40, I'm just doing an X Charter. Unless this guy's done a whole bunch of stuff to it, especially for that range. Because over here, remember, I can go newer for the same price. Uh, that's 415 So, yeah, I get 2018. So, I can go a little bit newer. I can get the same boat. So, unless this one's got a bunch of upgrades, it just I'm better off just buying a uh, a blank slate. And, uh, so it gives me the engine hours. Like I, like I care about the builder's remarks. You ass clown. A builder just wants you to sell me his boat. It's like that, uh, the Kraken dude. He's like, oh my God, my boat's the only boat that can cross the world and cross oceans. His boat's also the only boat that has the least amount of circumnavigations, the least amount of ocean crossings, the least experience offshore with that boat. So it's really hard for me to get behind that. 9.9 .9 useless. Um, 270 watt solar panels, 600. Yeah. So this boat's not going to fall into that category of they've done a bunch of stuff to it. It's better than one of these X charters. Just grab an X charter. Make more sense there at that kind of budget. Uh, the not a tech 40 open again. We're just going to do an X charter. The 2000 out. We've actually made some progress. Again, another 42 right in that price range. Digging it. Uh, you see how they, they're they inching closer with their uh, hard tops? Just extend them all the way back. Extend them all the way back. Go. Go. Like, stop doing that with your design. That computer-generated nonsense. Uh, I don't need to see the exterior at all. Not even, like, a little bit. Nope, still don't. Nope. There we go. You know, it is what it is. This looks a lot like a this looks a lot like a mono hull interior from the same year. So you're just going for space here, really. Uh, comfortable living quarters, things like that. Everything on one level. I love it. Is that a bread maker or an air fryer? Uh, anyway, I mean, I like it. 
it is what it is. It's 433 grand, 2017, 42. In this case, probably better off with this one. As long as it's not a dump truck. Uh, it might be a dump truck. Based off this lazy ass broker's listing, might be a dump truck. Again, let's not do business with people like this. Let's just not do it. If you can't give me any information in your boat listing, I don't want to do business with you anymore. Um, now he's giving me some, but again, you didn't tell me the year. Okay. We got a, there we go. That's good. Okay. We got the washer and dryer on board. All right. Okay. You told me some stuff. Okay. All right. We got a little bit of stuff here. There we go. What kind of battery bank though? Um, you know, if you're buying these privately owned catamarans, somebody had money that bought it. You've got money because you're buying it. So make sure you get one when, with a nice lithium battery bank already installed. They're all doing it. So have somebody else have done it. Just make sure you check into it and see who did it, where it was done. Make sure it was a professionally installed catamaran owners are just having other people do their stuff. So you shouldn't have any problems there. So, okay. I take it back. Catamaran guru. My apologies. You did give me the information. I spoke too soon. I'm sorry. I'm going to go take a lap and apologize for my outburst. I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back. So I'm sorry. Uh, you did a good job on your listing. Okay, so now we got a whole bunch of stuff here. Again, this is where the spreadsheet comes into play. You can start listing things out there uh, and really, really get after it and kind of figure out what you're working with. Now, again, once I, well, I said like an hour ago, the $500,000 catamaran, I mean, it's hard to fault a lot of them. I'm going for a well-known brand that's been around for a long time with an owner that's previously done a whole bunch of upgrades to it. Uh, and not backyard YouTube sailor upgrades, you know, a thousand amp hour lithium battery upgrade stuff. Um, now we can go all the way up to Lagoon 50. This boat's giant, absolutely giant. I mean, for 450 K I would expect it to be, but look, a nice little seating area here. And if your budget's 450 gray, 50 K, can I, can I have some money please? <laughs> uh, but yeah, the Lagoon 50, 500, this is phenomenal. I mean, you you got that kind of money and that's what you want to do get after it go for it enjoy your life um so for this price range if you're looking at you know you want to compare it to like a monohull for instance it's really not a comparison now the monohull can give it some uh the monohull give it a run for its money but it's it's gonna it's gonna come in second place uh let's go price high to low so you'd be looking at this boat to compare it monohull wise and as lovely as this is, it it just doesn't. You see that? It just it cannot hold a candle to the catamaran for 500k. It can't do it. It just makes me sad because I'm a monohull lover, but it just can't do it. So now we've covered, in my opinion, the catamaran market all the way up to half a million dollars. Hopefully, this video helps you a lot. I'm going to live stream right after this. Now, don't forget, like the video, comment, subscribe. Super chats are always appreciated. Thank you guys all so, so much for watching. And I'll see you just a little bit on the live stream.